but it can happen to anybody else, everybody. Because the time I was having a good job and my home and my car and everything, money flowing every month, I wasn't thinking I would end up here. But it come to attend that even what you have to eat is problem. So there's no way to go than run out over here. So it can happen to anybody else. My name is Mike Soyak. I'm Executive Director of Shelter Health Services. We run a free health clinic for homeless women and children and we're located within the Salvation Army Center of Hope in Charlotte, North Carolina. And it has progressed quite a bit because the population of homeless women and children has increased substantially. Hey there. Hello. I'm Dr. Holliday. Hey buddy. How old is he? 18 months. 18 months. You got a tear in your eye. Has he been crying? Mm -hmm. There you go. All right, now, he goes by yeah. Jerome. We see a lot of different things here. In the shelter here, Over right around 50% of the, of the people who stay in the shelter are children, so there's plenty of medical needs for the kids here. And when I come over on a weeknight evening, I can typically see anything from a child with a cold to someone with strep throat to someone who's having school problems. Uh, Asthma is a big thing, especially with a lot of our shelter population. Okay, I'm just going to take a listen to you. Let's listen right here, right there. Yes, you don't have money, you don't have Medicaid, and you don't have insurance. It's a big, big problem. Interestingly, most people feel that the poor have Medicaid that it's a universal insurance coverage for those people that are very poor and don't have any money. Well, it's far from reality. In fact, 80% of the women and 44% of the children do not have Medicaid. Therefore, the clinic truly is their only source of receiving health care and health information. Because I'm an emergency physician, so there's some of these women that I've actually seen before they got involved in recovery. Um, or when they were still homeless and so or, or people even if it's not them in particular people who kind of embody the same um, life circumstances that some of the women here in the shelter um, are finding themselves in and so um, you know it's, it's a lot of piecemeal stuff you know coming in um, basically getting patched up in the ED no follow-up care you know we know that people can go bankrupt here in the United States um, just from a couple of doctor bills that are overdue um, or especially when they are running into health problems when they don't have insurance and so whatever I can do to help out with that um, to help people gain access to a system that is sometimes inaccessible for people. It only contributes to the cycle of poverty when people don't have the opportunity to access health and I think it's really more of a right than it is a privilege. So. Well, I don't know. I don't know, so I'm grateful to God and I thank him for putting me on, on this path here at the shelter. I'm grateful that the shelter is open for women like for like myself and you know other women. I'm grateful. Well, we're glad to be here to help you. Thank you. If you're not interested in this for altruistic reasons, certainly there's socioeconomic reasons that should probably motivate everyone to be considerate of the, the needs of the poor. And I lost my job. I couldn't afford to pay my mortgage because I don't have a job. I lost my car, so I lost everything. I was trying hard to get a job, you know, to put things together, but it didn't work the way I wanted it to be, so I end up here. Truly, the women and the children that are homeless are the most vulnerable, the most vulnerable to existing conditions getting worse, and the most vulnerable to developing other conditions that can be prevented or avoided. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. David Pearson. I am one of the clinic volunteers here. I've been volunteering here for about four years. What makes this opportunity, as I like to view it for myself, stand out amongst all the other um, volunteer opportunities as a, a healthcare provider is simply that it really does serve the most vulnerable population. They have so many other obstacles in their life, so many other uh, challenges that they have to overcome 
health really shouldn't be such a high hill for them to or a high mountain that they have to climb over and so by making it more attainable making it more uh, easy to get medication refills and to get their chronic disease management uh, treatments uh, to make sure um, uh, all those things are straightened out before they go out and look for a job and can take care of their children and can just navigate the routine things in life. I was having a job is different, but this clinic has been very good to me, helped me, you know, test everything and then helped me to get my medicine. Therefore, our mission is to remove those health issues from becoming barriers to their becoming from self-sufficient remove them as barriers to finding a job, to keeping a job, to getting affordable housing and being able to move out of the shelter. Dr. Sullivan, nice to see you. Hi, how are you? Most of the women that I see here uh, have previously had accession to health care, uh, previously had doctors, previously had health insurance, and then for a lot of reasons uh, have lost their health insurance, have lost their uh, ability to financially support themselves and then they can't see their doctors and then they start to run out of medications and then they become concerned about their medical problems. Um, they're pretty easily managed and I think we make a difference uh, refilling high blood pressure medications, we talked about diabetes and diet and exercise, uh, smoking cessation. See your uh, diabetes medicine stay the same, watch your blood sugars closely, watch your diet closely mm -hmm. and I'd uh, try and exercise as much as you can. And I think your daughter's going to hassle you about uh, giving up the cigarettes more than I will, so. <laughs> she's going to be 16 months. Well, she's hassling me about more than that. Oh, well, <laughs> you, got a, you got a plate full. In effect, what we're doing is helping eliminate homelessness one person at a time through health and wellness. Clinic doesn't care about what it, whoever or whatever. They help you to get your medicine. So it's been very, very helpful to all of us.